just wanted to go into more detail about why I wouldn't recommend getting an Avronia as a pet. Let me her up to you guys so you can get a closer look at her. Okay, she's not happy. <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous, but I'm gonna inject the roach with the panicker. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I just got this Abronia in. This is an Abronia graminia, Then she is not doing well. I'm hoping that I'll be able to kind of nurse her back to health and get her to where she needs to be, but she's in pretty rough shape right now. So I wanna kinda go over that with you guys and take you through this process of hopefully getting her back to good health. So this is a female Abronia graminia. I'm not sure how old she is. I believe she's captive bred. That's what I was told. She was rehomed to me from someone who was only caring for them for a few months, but in that time, the Abronia had gone downhill. It's very skinny. I put up the pictures that were sent to me before I got the Abronia so you can kind of see what kind of shape she was in before she was even shipped to me. I know that she was kept without UVB for a little while and that's obviously really bad for them. And I guess another reason why I want to do this video is kind of a moral of don't get an Abronia if you don't know what you're doing because they're definitely not a beginner species. Their care isn't that difficult, but if you mess anything up, they aren't very forgiving. There are some reptiles where if you do something wrong, it's not going to be a huge deal as long as you fix it, you know? But with Abronia and a lot of other really sensitive reptile species, if you get their care wrong, you don't have very much time to fix it before it's fatal. So UVB is very important for Abronia. Humidity is very important for Abronia. Ventilation is very important for them. There's just a lot of different factors that go into their care and you need to make sure you get it right. So uh, this is the female that was shipped to me. I haven't taken her out yet. I literally just got home from picking her up and I was like, I was unsure if she was even going to make it the trip here because she was in such rough shape. Could have parasites. She could just be skinny from the stress and not having UVB for a while, maybe not eating as much as she should have been. There's a lot of different things it could be, but I'm going to take her out so we can take a look at her up close and then I'm going to go ahead and get a weight on her because I just want to keep track of her weight obviously so I can kind of see if she's losing weight or gaining weight. Anyways, let's take her out. So. If you guys can see her very well, but she is very small. I'm just gonna bring her up to you guys so you can get a closer look at her. So, okay, she's not happy. <laughs> she's like flattening herself a lot right now because she's in a very defensive position. So it doesn't look as skinny, but when she goes back to like her normal shape, you'll be able to see better but you can kind of see how pronounced her spine is. I'm gonna go ahead and get a weight on her really quick and then we're going to put her in her enclosure. So I'm just gonna switch this to grams. So she is 13.2 grams. I'm just gonna make a note of that really quickly on my phone. I'm gonna put her back in her little cup, and then we're gonna go outside and put her in her enclosure. So here's the enclosure I set up for her. I decided I'm putting her outside because obviously I just think that's the best for her. The weather is perfect for them, and obviously the natural sunlight is the absolute best thing any reptile can have. And then normally when I bring home any animal, especially if it's a sick animal, I do a quarantine setup with paper towels because that's just the most sterile thing you can do and it's really easy to monitor poops that way. But because like I said, she's really skinny as it is and Abronias have very specific care requirements. I'm just putting her kind of in a normal setup, um, but it is a bit smaller than I would normally keep an adult Abronia in. I just want it to be pretty minimal um, for the substrate. I'm still using like a nice thick layer of sphagnum moss. That's super important for Abronia. There's that. I have a couple bromeliads in there and then just like some fake plants, some corks, some vines, stuff like that. It's very basic. Um, just giving her everything she needs and hopefully we can get her eating and see how it goes. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and put her in there. Dusty. Hey. I'm trying to put you in your enclosure. She's being so difficult. There you go. That prehensile tail at work. What an interesting position. Go. What are you doing? Hey. Go on. And then I'm just gonna mist everything down really well so that she has a lot of moisture. So I'm about to go ahead and treat this Abronia with Panicure, which is a parasite treatment. A lot of animals will have parasites just in general. It's not always a big deal. But when under immense stress or generally if the animal becomes unhealthy, sometimes if it has any just internal parasites, they can kind of run rampant and really cause issues. I want to go ahead and treat it for parasites just to make sure that we're kind of eliminating any parasites it might have so that its recovery process can be a lot more smooth. So what I'm going to attempt to do is inject a roach with the panicker and try to feed her the roach. Anyways, I'm just... That's... So strange. Ugh. Okay. So I injected this little roach with panicker and we're gonna go see, I'm gonna dust it with like calcium and maybe a little bit of bee pollen to make it extra appetizing. And then we're gonna see if she eats it. Hopefully she does. So it's really hard to see, but I had to film it kind of on my phone cause she was in the back of the enclosure, but she did end up eating the roach. I just got the tail end of her swallowing it and licking her lips. She took it right away, swallowed it immediately. The other day, I'm not exaggerating. We threw some crickets in there the day we got her just to see if she would eat. And she grabbed one of the crickets and held onto it for over an hour. Like we were sitting outside for about 30 minutes just waiting to see if she was gonna eat it. She was just holding it in her mouth. We were like, screw this. We are not sitting outside forever. Went inside, another like 30 minutes passed. We go outside and look again. It's still in her mouth. Obviously it either escaped or she swallowed it. We really don't know, but that was just insane. So I was kind of worried that she wasn't eating. So it's a relief that she took the roach and swallowed it immediately and she got the parasite treatment in her. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated on how everything goes. I definitely, I started out not having a lot of hope because she was in pretty poor shape and Abronia are just so sensitive, but I'm starting to have a lot more hope that we can hopefully get her back into really good health. Hello friends. So I just wanted to go into more detail about why I wouldn't recommend getting an Abronia as a pet or why I don't think they make good pets. I'm not saying this to try to shoot down any hopes you have of owning an Abronia. Don't get me wrong, I love them. They're definitely like one of my favorite lizards. That's why I work with them. Where I think a lot of people go wrong is they buy a cool lizard because they think it looks cool, but they don't actually realize what they're committing to. And so this is more so just to potentially detour you from getting an Abronia if it's not what you're expecting it to be, or just to give you honest expectations of what you're gonna get if you get a pet Abronia. Maybe you'll hear everything I say and say, you know what, I still want one, but then you'll be better prepared to get one. You know what I'm saying? Obviously this Abronia that I got in is the perfect example of someone who got an Abronia and it went downhill like pretty quickly in health. And that's something that might happen to you, you know? The first thing, they are very often wild caught or smuggled into the country illegally. There's a couple issues with buying a Nebronia that's wild caught. They're endangered, so it's not really great for them to be smuggled out of their habitat, you know, for the pet trade. So that's just generally something you don't really want to support, especially if you're just getting it as a pet. Wild caught ones often will not thrive very well in captivity. They're hard to get started. They often have some sort of issues. A lot of times they have parasites. Not all Abronia are wild caught. There are a handful of people who are successfully breeding them. And I'm mostly talking about Graminia here because they're the most common. But there's obviously a bunch of other types of Abronia and this kind of applies to all of them. But Graminia specifically would be probably the easiest to get a captive bred specimen, but it's still not easy. 
because there's still a lot of wild caught ones out there. Some people will have a wild caught one and say it's captive bred just to make it easier to sell and more desirable. It's kind of hard to tell for sure if an abronia is wild caught or captive bred, unless you're doing business with someone who you know personally bred the abronia themselves. In general, keeping a wild caught animal and getting it accustomed to captivity is a lot more difficult than just getting a captive bred animal. If you are considering getting an abronia, you want to make sure you're getting a captive bred one. Even if you are for sure getting a captive bred abronia, there are still things to consider. And like I mentioned, and kind of the whole point of this, is they are very, very sensitive reptiles. Now, their care isn't extremely difficult to achieve, but there are specific requirements that you need to meet and if you don't meet those requirements, they can go downhill pretty quickly. For example, they like humidity, but at the same time, they like a lot of airflow. So a lot of people will keep them in screen enclosures, and I feel like the best thing for them is to keep them in a screen enclosure outside as long as the temperature and the weather is good for them. But not everyone lives somewhere where they can keep the Nembronia outside all year round. Some people will keep them in glass or hybrid enclosures, but then add some sort of fan to help circulate the air and add more air circulation to the enclosure, which also works. They need UVB, obviously. That's a very important one. That's not super difficult to do but they're also very heat sensitive. So if you're getting temperatures to 90 plus basically, that can be fatal for them. Let's say the air conditioning stops working or the power goes out in your house or something and you live somewhere where it's really hot and the temperature in the room your bronia is in gets really hot, they can very easily die from overheating. And aside from just how sensitive they are, they are not very handleable lizards. Like if you want a reptile that you can kind of handle a lot, and Abronia definitely isn't the one for you because you're gonna end up stressing it out. They really don't like being handled. Some will tolerate it better than others, but for the most part, most Abronia that I know at least do not like being handled very much. And it's just something that you wanna keep to a minimum to reduce the chance of any issues coming about from stress. They're very, very beautiful lizards and I love them, but they're definitely the type of thing where you wanna set up like the perfect enclosure for them, make sure all their needs are met, and just enjoy looking at them. You know, they're very beautiful. You don't have to handle them all the time. Um, I really enjoy just watching them, seeing them do their best that way. You know what I'm saying? Another thing to keep in mind if you're like, I want to get them and breed them, is breeding them is not super easy, I guess. Um, some people have success with breeding them, like I have. Some people don't have success. It took me a few years to have success with breeding them, but they're not like the easiest thing ever to breed. If they were, there would be a lot more people breeding them. If you want to get into breeding them, I definitely recommend talking to people who have had success breeding them. Don't go into it blindly because you might be disappointed if you get a Nebronia pair and they end up never breeding for you. Just things to consider and uh, I'll definitely keep you guys updated on this female that I have. Uh, she seems to be eating and doing pretty well, especially I think having her outside has made a huge difference for her. Just fingers crossed that she puts on some weight and keeps eating and everything goes well. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you guys in my next video.